During this virtual macabre Mother's Day special, I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint these beautiful daisies. Now, these daisies can be part of a double, triple, quadruple, whatever size canvas you want. You can just keep adding them on, as you can see in this picture here of the double daisies. So before you start this painting, decide who is going to be where because we are going to need to synchronize the canvas throughout the class to make sure they match up. Now I am using an 8x10 canvas board for this demonstration. You can use any size canvas you like. You can even use a thicker cardstock or mixed media paper. It has to be something a little bit thicker that can take some paint and water. Now in order to create our beautiful daisy masterpieces, we're going to need acrylic paint. Now I am using just the primaries, red, yellow, blue, and a little bit of white for mixing. I've got a paper towel, two water pots for cleaning my brushes. Now I have a few different brushes. I've got a larger flat head for doing my background, a smaller round head for some details, and then a really small liner brush for adding the stems and fine details at the end. Now this old brush here is a hog's hair brush that I am going to be using to create some different splatters on mine. I'm using a hog's hair because it's got a real bounce to the bristles. It's a very old battered brush. I never throw away my brushes. I keep them because you never know when you're going to need that style of brush. Now you can also use a synthetic brush to do the splatters or even a toothbrush. Something that's got a little bit of bounce that's gonna help you really launch that paint onto the canvas. Now to begin our beautiful daisy paintings, we need to start with the background first. So I am going to use my largest paintbrush. I have a nice flathead brush here for creating some sweeping motions and getting lovely smooth colors in my background. So what I'm going to do is start with yellow. Now before I start painting, I want to protect my table. So I'm going to lay down some paper towels and pop my canvas on top of it. So when my brush goes off the side, I'm getting it on the paper towel and not the table. Always protect your work surfaces. Us artists are very messy. Now I'm gonna turn my canvas to make a slightly easier angle there. Now I'm starting with just yellow paint. No water. My acrylics that I'm using are very runny. You can see what brand I'm using in the materials, in the materials link listed. So what I'm going to do is actually start down low here and sweep my paintbrush from left to right, getting a super bright yellow covering all over my painting. Now, depending on what size canvas you are using, this could take you a little while or you could be done super fast. But remember, either way, you can pause this video whenever you need to to allow yourself a little bit of extra time, or if you're done, just take a break. I'll be with you shortly. So I'm going to be working my way up, up the painting until I get to just above the halfway marker here. And I'm gonna just kind of smooth it out a little bit up here. And then stop. Okay, so I've got bright yellow on the lower section come up to the halfway point and then I've pushed it up a little bit further and I'm going to leave it there. Now what I'm going to do is mix up a really bright pink. So I need to clean my paintbrush off really well. I have two pots of water here, one for doing my first clean and one for doing my clean rinse. So into my first water pot, pushing the brush on the bottom and really opening out those bristles, getting all of that sneaky yellow paint out of there so it doesn't contaminate my next color. So my water's turned yellow, hasn't it? But if I go into my rinse water, what I'm doing is getting that yellow water out of my paintbrush. There we are, dab on the paper towel just to make sure, yep, it's clean. So a bright pink. We're gonna end up with different pinks. Depending on what brand of paint you're using, you could have a brighter pink or a duller pink. It doesn't matter. Play with the colors until you are happy with what you are looking at. So what I'm going to do is take a good scoop of my bright red over to the side here, and I'm going to take a little bit of white, not cleaning my brush here, just a little bit of white, and I'm gonna fold that in. I'm gonna take a little bit more actually, folding it in. So 
So I have this lovely bright pink here. Now what I'm going to do is just roll my brush on its side, squeezing all of that paint out. I only want a little bit of this color. And I'm going to take it along the top edge of my canvas here, just along the very top edge. Lovely, bringing it down a little bit, letting it gently kind of blend back into the white again. Doesn't take much at all, just a little bit. Smoothing out those strokes, taking my brush along, getting a nice smooth surface. For now, we're gonna mess that up a little bit. Now I'm going to clean my brush off again pretty quickly. I wanna jump into the next color whilst it's still wet. So into my washing water and my rinsing water. Now I need an orange, so here's a quick mix. A little bit of yellow to the side tiny spot of red in there. Fold the two together and you can see it's starting to turn orange. Add red a tiny spot at a time until you're happy with the shade that you have achieved. I like this. That is perfect. There we go. Getting just a little bit of paint on my brush. Now I'm going to start in the middle right here. Pink up top, yellow down bottom and I'm going to get the majority of the paint off of my brush. Do you notice I'm not smoothing my brush anymore? I'm doing a dip dab every direction stroke. This time we're creating some energy and leaving some fun texture behind. So my arm is just whipping back and forth, bouncing that brush around, pulling the orange down. Can you see how it's kind of blending into my yellow, creating a smooth transition between the yellow and the orange? So you don't really see where the yellow finishes and the orange begin, the two just kind of blend together. Let's do the same going up. So having the pink a little bit wet is super for making it a little bit easier to blend these two together, the pink and the orange. There we are, dib dab, all directions. Just keep going, keep going until you are happy with what you are looking at. You might want it blended more. Perhaps you don't like these strokes. Smooth it out if you don't, it's up to you. Now, if you are working with others to create one large painting that comes together, so you have rows of daisies, what you need to do now, and this is a very important step, is get together with your teammates, lay your canvases out next to each other so they're touching. So if I bring in another canvas here, we're going to lay them down so they are touching. I'm not actually going to paint on this one, but what you will do is take your brush from one to the other and make sure you've got a smooth blend that runs along all the canvases. Every now and then we will stop and synchronize our canvases with others so it looks like one giant painting. And then we'll go back to painting our own. So let's just blend out this background. There we go guys, that is the start of our daisy painting. Now, trust me, that is the hardest bit done, getting that background blended the way you like it. So we're gonna give this a second to dry. Let's make sure we clean our brushes off really well. Push it down on the bottom of the water pot. Lovely, we are going to be using these big brushes again into our clean rinse. Now, when you're not using a paintbrush, never leave it in your water pot. Always leave it laying down. 
That way our bristles don't bend into awkward shapes, which makes it very tricky to use in the future. So what we're going to do is take a little break and I will see you in about five minutes. Okay, we are back. Our paintings are lovely and dry and I'm switching up to my smaller paintbrush to get my daisies in here. Now, first of all, we're working on single canvases, just your own. Plot where your daisies are going to go first. Then we'll work on the ones that join onto other people's canvases. So what I'm using is pure white with no water, just white. We want our daisies to be super bright. So I'm picking up a little bit of white paint and I'm starting with a spot to mark out where the middle of my daisy is going to go. So I'm going to start up here on mine. You can have your daisies plotted wherever you like. It is your painting. We're going to do whole ones that fit on the paintings first. So I'm going to do just a little white circle. This is the middle of my daisy here. Now what I'm going to do are some large petal shapes coming away from the middle. You can do any style you want. I'm just doing almost cartoon looking daisies for mine. So I'm coming down and around. Just pure white paint. Spread it nice and smooth so it dries quickly. We don't want thick bubbles of paint on the surface. You can see a little bit of my background showing through. That's totally fine. It is much easier to do multiple thin layers than thick layers that take hours to dry. We don't want that. So I'm going to go around, sketch in all of my petals here the way that I want them. Now I would like to add a second coat of white to this one to brighten it up, but I am not going to do that until this one has dried. So I'm going to go to a new location and paint in all of my other daisies whilst I'm waiting for this one to dry. So I don't want all of my daisies to be in a row at the same height. I'm going to make sure my next one is a little bit lower or higher, depending on where you've put your first one. And I'm going to start again with the middle. So this one's going to be down here. This will be the middle. And here we go again. So I'm going to just very lightly fill in where my petals are going to go. We're all going to have something different. And everybody, if you're working with other people to make a large painting, you're all going to have slightly different shapes and slightly different sized petals. And I think that's really lovely. It's like putting your own personal signature in your painting. You can recognize your painting by who did what style of daisy. So don't worry, don't panic if they're not looking the same. You'll see when they come together at the end, it looks really cute. So here we go, all the way around. This one's a little different to that one. Totally okay with that. I'm gonna do a short petal here. And then a long one that shoots out the side there. Lovely. Now I've got two large daisies on mine. Now I'm just showing you one painting, but if I was working with other people and I wanted to join on, I would bring somebody else's canvas in to the right hand side over here and they would paint the petals going just onto their painting there. And if I was going to do the same on the left, which I am actually going to do a part of a daisy here, I line my canvas up there. I could have a daisy, a couple petals here on mine, which goes onto the other person's painting. So it's time to stop, 
Synchronize your canvases and have daisies going from one to the other. Just for the initial sketch, you don't need to line them up again to paint all the details on. It's just so we know where they're sitting. So I'm going to have a couple of sneaky petals here to show that I've got a daisy that's leaving on both sides that can join on to somebody else's painting. So again, just that pure white. There we go. Lovely. Okay, now I'm going to go in. It dries very quickly when you do nice thin coats. So I'm going to quickly add a second layer of white to all of my daisies. Look how bright that is now. A nice second coat, still lovely and smooth. We don't want to use thick layers of paint that take a long time to dry and leave bumpy textures on the surface. Let's go over all of our daisies with a second coat of paint. There we are, lovely and bright. So what I'm going to do now is clean my brush off again into my dirty water first, and then into my clean rinse water. Gorgeous. And I'm going to put the bright yellow middles on my daisy neck. So I'm using pure yellow. I dab the water off of my brush, and I'm going to go into the center of each daisy and just lay down a bright yellow middle. Dabbing my brush up and down, leaving a little bit of texture there. Definitely looking more like daisies now, aren't they? Beautiful. This one's going to be a little bit flatter. There we go. Now I'm going to let that dry. Whilst it's drying, I'm actually going to jump into using my big paintbrush again. So here we go. Laying the small brush down, picking up the big brush. I'm just going to make sure it's dry, dabbing on my paper towel. Now I'm going to take a scoop of yellow to a clean area of my palette, just a little bit. And I'm going to take the tiniest spot of blue, look at that, a tiny spot, and fold it in. And it turns to a lovely lime green straight away. Lovely. I'm actually going to add a teeny little bit more, a little spot. There we are. Now I want to create a little bit of a green tinge down low that's going to be behind my stems and leaves. So using that chippy choppy brush stroke again, I'm going to just go in all different directions and leave behind almost like a little stain of green. It's so light. There we are. Crissing and crossing back and forth. Just a little hint of green down there. All the way along the bottom. I do not want to totally hide all of my gorgeous yellow down here. So I'm keeping it quite low down. This is just a little bit of green that you'll see in between the petals in between the leaves and stems, creating the illusion there's a lot more greenery going on behind it. Kind of a blurry texture there. Lovely, bring some of it up a little bit higher. Right the way up to my flowers, but I'm being careful because I know my flowers are still wet, so I don't want to accidentally drag my lovely white petals out. If you do, do not worry, these are acrylics. They are so easy and forgiving. So just let it dry and go over what you don't want there. Beautiful, that is all I need to do. Now, what I'm going to do is start putting in my stems. I'm waiting for my flowers to dry before I do any more details on them. So my brush here, I'm going to clean it off. I want to use my small brush for getting my stems and leaves in here. Into my rinse. Dabbing on the paper towel and laying it down. Never leave it in your water. Now let's just make sure this one's dry. Now I would like a slightly darker green to start putting my stems in. 
not too dark because I would also like to add a nice shadow later on to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now, this paint's getting a little bit tacky. It's been out for a while. When I say tacky, I mean sticky. So it sticks to the brush and it's hard to pull off onto the canvas. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of water. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm picking up a bit of water and folding it into my color to loosen it up. Now it's a little more slimy and it slides off the brush easier. So let's start putting in our stems first. So I'm gonna start right up high at my daisy here and I'm gonna do a nice line that comes down and leaves the painting, lovely. This one here is going to be kind of blowing in the wind off to the side there. And then this one, well that's this person's problem over here. So this petal here, this flower that I have here, the stem is going to be going off to the side there. So whoever is to the left of me is going to deal with that flower. So. Now I've got my basic stems in, I'm going to start doing some grass going up. Now we do not want all of our grass shooting up in straight lines. We want it to be a little more relaxed, kind of bending, folding in, like there's a breeze going through this field and the grass is growing up in slightly different directions. So what I'm going to do, relax your wrist when you do this. Start down low and just gently pull the paintbrush up. Now, as you pull the paintbrush up and lift towards the top of the grass, your brush stroke is going to get thinner, creating a nice taper, a nice point to the top of the grass. So a nice relaxed stroke as you drift up away, lift the brush off the canvas. So here we go again, nice and light. If you're doing this, and the paint won't come off your brush and you're having to press really hard and drag your brush across the canvas, add a little bit more water in there. I'm going to mix up some more color for mine. If the paint is too dry, all that's going to happen is you're going to press harder to get the paint off the brush. And when you press harder, your line gets thicker. And we're going to end up with a row of green tree trunks rather than nice blades of grass and leaves down low. So let's do the same over here. Use whatever brush you feel comfortable with as well. You can use a thicker brush with a light pressure or you can switch up and use a tiny brush, whatever you feel you need to do. Let's do one kind of crossing over here. There we go. Gonna thicken it up down here a little bit. There we are, I think I'm happy with that. Now my green needs to get a lot darker. So what I'm going to do is take a very good scoop of blue and fold it into my same green. Do you see how it's getting a lot darker? There we go. It's also going to mix with the light green that's on the surface, so it's gonna end up being a tad lighter on your canvas, so bear that in mind as you're mixing your color. You want it to be lovely and dark. There we go. Now I'm going to add some dark down low and to one side of my petal. So before I start, let's figure out where our light is. I'm gonna say my light's coming in from the upper right hand side. So my shadows are going to be on the lower left. So let's start down low with a bit of this green. Oh, beautiful. Look how lovely and dark that is, gorgeous. Turn your canvas to make an easier angle. I find it easier to run across my canvas. So I'm turning my canvas to help me with that motion. So I'm not having to twist my arm into awkward positions. Here we go, all the way up. Now I am pressing so lightly. I'm not kidding, if my eyes were closed, I would have no idea I'm painting right now. I can't even feel the surface of the painting. As soon as I see the color coming off of my brush, I stop pressing and just gently glide my brush along until I come to the end of the leaf that I am working on. Lovely. Following through each one. There 
I'm just building up a tiny bit more dark at the bottom here. And then right underneath my flowers here, the petals are going to be creating a little bit more of a dark shadow right at the top. So it's a little bit thicker up there. There we are. And I'm going to let that dry. And as that's drying, I'm going to go back into my flowers again. So I'm cleaning my brush off really well. And then into my rinse water, making sure it's clean. Now I'm going to start with a little bit of light blue and just whisk that down through my petals. So I'm taking a little bit of white and a tiny bit of blue together. A little bit more, tiny bit darker than that. There, lovely. Now I'm starting towards the center of my petal and I'm following the shape, whipping my brush out around. It doesn't take much and you don't have to do this on every one. Just a little stroke. Gently whipping it down. Now, if you feel you've gone too heavy and too dark, what you can do is take the paint off of your brush, dry it, and pick up just a little bit of white paint and use that white paint to blend it out a little bit like this to make it even softer. It's totally up to you if you want a soft, whimsical looking flower or some slightly darker, more solid looking lines on there. Work with what you have. Don't worry about the person next to you. Remember, you're all going to have something different. Doesn't matter if your paintings are all going to come together to make one. It's really lovely that you all have a different style. And let's do the same on all of our daisies that we have. So I'm going in with a little bit of blue. There we are, taking everything off my brush and just using a little bit of white to haze it out into my actual daisy petal so I have a smooth blend. There we go, now I'm cleaning my brush off again, dabbing it on my paper towel, and this time I want a nice dark fiery orange to add some detail to the middle of my flowers to pull your eye into the center. So let's work on top of our orange, mine's dried up, so I'm gonna use that spot to mix up some more. A good scoop of red in there because I want a dark fiery orange. So a little bit of yellow, lots of red in there, beautiful. Now, there's a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm spinning it around, pushing it down onto my plate, picking up that paint using just the tip of the brush. If I overload my brush, I'm going to overload my canvas, and I don't want to do that. With dark colors like this, I just want to add tiny hints so I'm not overpowering an area. So again, I'm going to turn my painting to make an easier angle. Now, I'm going to follow the bottom arch, stippling, bouncing my brush up and down, stippling the lower section, like a smile, my flower is smiling. And I'm gonna just bounce up and down a little bit higher up into my flower there. Now what I'm going to do is clean my brush, dab it, and pick up just yellow. Now the yellow is going to help me blend that orange back into the center of the flower again. So I'm going along that edge, bouncing up and down, getting a nice blend from that dark orange back into the lighter center. There we go. So that's really pulling your eye into the middle there. I'm gonna do the same on this one. So scrape the yellow off, that dark orange again, and you're following down low, like a smile, following down the lower section of your daisy, just underneath. You're dabbing, so you're leaving that lovely bumpy texture in the middle of the flower. Then take everything off your brush. Dabbing is very important. We don't want lots of water sitting on the surface. Pick up just yellow and same again, working along that edge where the dark orange meets the yellow and gently stippling. So stippling is your brush bouncing up and down like this. 
So you get a nice blend from the dark into the light. There we go, isn't that looking beautiful? Now we're going to add some real dark fine detail down onto our stems. So I'm switching up and using a teeny brush for this. So here we go, I'm using a liner brush, a very small round headed brush. So whatever you have that's small like this, into your water, I've wet the brush just to get the bristles to go in the same direction here. Now what I'm going to do, is mix up a very, very dark green. So in order to make the screen look even darker without using black, notice we haven't used any black for this painting. This is a very light, bubbly painting. Black's gonna drag it to the dark side, no black. Just the colors we have here, the primaries. So what I'm going to do is start by mixing up a little more yellowy green again. Some blue in there to make it nice and dark already. Now to make it look even darker, well, I don't have a lot of options. You can probably guess what we're gonna put in there. White will make it lighter. A little bit of red is going to make it darker, just a little bit. Fold that in. Do you see how we're getting a lovely dark green now? Beautiful. My paints are again a little bit sticky and tacky, so I'm adding a tiny bit of water. Lovely. Now important, turn your canvas. Do not let your arm get tired because your, your lines are going to wobble. So easier angle and we're running up just the back edge of the daisies, that dark section there. Lovely. See how it stands out a little bit more? Lovely. We're going to do that on the left hand side of each of our daisies, just adding a little bit of a dark shadow there. Now this is up to you. Perhaps you like yours the way that they are. They're a little bit lighter. Leave them the way that they are. You don't have to do this step. Everyone is a little different. Now if you add too much dark to yours and think, oh no, what have I done? Let it dry. As soon as it dries, go over it with a lighter color. These acrylics, I'm not kidding, are so forgiving. One of my favorite mediums to work in and to teach because of how forgiving it is. It's very easy to change. So let's follow up each one, one side. If your grass crosses over like I have here, make sure you figure out which one is on top and which one is underneath. Bring that to a nice point there, lovely. Turning again for that easy angle. So this one goes behind. There we go. If you need to mix up more color, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit lighter or darker, as long as it's close, close enough. There we are, lovely. And then again, a little bit darker up close to my petals because those petals are gonna be casting a little bit of a shadow on the upper section of the stems here. So a little bit darker up high. Beautiful. Now I'm going to use my same liner brush here, my same skinny brush, cleaning it off. And I'm gonna use a little bit of white, but I have to water it down. Again, my paints are getting a little bit sticky and tacky where they've been out for so long. Watering it down, rolling it so there's only a little bit of paint on my brush. Turning again. And on the opposite side where the light is, so on the right hand side this time, I'm going to very gently pull my brush up and leave a little bit of light. Again, this is optional. See how it looks on mine and decide whether or not you would like to add it to yours. Very gentle. The, the lighter you grip the brush, the more delicate your lines will be. If I hold my brush really hard so my knuckles turn white, I'm going to press harder onto the canvas. The lighter and more relaxed my grip, the lighter my brush stroke will be. Helpful hint there. So nice and gentle, wisping up. I'm just letting the brush glide across the surface, just gently guiding it with my hand. There we are. 
each one a little bit of a highlight doesn't take very much at all and again if you've done something you don't like do not worry let it dry and you can go over it there we go ready for the funnest part ever yep it's splatter time now for these splatters be prepared clear your space paint will fly now you can line your paintings up next to one another if you're working with others and get all of your splatters to kind of launch across onto each other's canvases. It's a really lovely way of connecting those canvases if you have splatters half on yours and half on somebody else's. But you have to let go of your work a little bit because other people will be painting on yours. If you're a little more precious over what you've done, keep it to yourself. Totally up to you. Use all the colors that you have left. I've got lots of colors on my plate and I fully intend to splatter them all over my work. Now I'm going to show you guys a couple different splatters and you decide what will look more awesome on your painting. I am using a hogshead brush. This is a super cheap paint brush with a real bounce to the bristles. So when I pull the bristles back, it will launch that paint and really skim it across my canvas. You can't do this with a soft head brush like a watercolor brush because the bristles will just flop and it won't give you that spring that you need. A toothbrush is excellent to use as well. Make sure it's not a current toothbrush that you're using. You don't want that covered in paint. Or you can use a synthetic brush like this. So the ones that we have been using do still have a bounce. You could use this as well. Totally up to you. If you're a little bit nervous, practice on a sheet of paper. So what I'm going to do, doesn't really matter what color your water is here. I'm going to start with my white paint. You need water mixed in or the paint is not going to fly. It's going to stick to your brush. So I'm really mixing the paint and the water together. Now I've really overloaded my brush here. So what I'm going to do is roll it on its side, squeezing all of that watery paint out there. Lovely. Now I've got another brush here and I'm gonna tap so this is the first method is to tap. So if you tap, it gives you some large singular splats like that. Now the other method is to throw the brush. That's how you end up with those little squiggly lines. So let's try that one. This one is the messiest, this method. So be prepared if you're going to try this one. So here we go. There we are, giving me those squiggly lines. And the last method is a spray, a very fine spray. My favorite technique for creating stars in galaxies or spray on surf. So for that, water the paint down a little bit more than you already have. Take your brush, you're gonna get messy fingers for this, and gently flick the bristles. That will give you a fine spray. I've given you three awesome methods. You have a palette full of paint. Have fun. Splatter away. Make sure you clean your brush really well between colors. There we go. Now I'm going to do some of that lovely dark green on mine. So I'm actually going to use all my colors here to mix up a nice big puddle of that dark green. There we go. My plate's done. I'm done painting, so I'm okay making a complete mess on here. And there we go. I'm gonna leave mine like that. I love the really bright explosive splats everywhere. You can add as many as you want. I've kept my splats down low. I've got just a couple sprays at the top. Have a play around with yours and see what kind of splatters and designs that you like. Remember to line all of your paintings up together if you're working with other people and make any adjustments that you need to. Make sure all of your flowers line up if you have petals going onto other canvases. Have a couple of splatters reaching from one to the other and make sure there's no niggly little blends that stand out. Go in now whilst you still have your palettes, touch up any little areas. 
Now, what you can do to identify who did what painting is pop your initials down in the corner once it's dried, but I'm sure you'll notice once you put all your paintings together, each one is going to look a little bit different. So you kind of already signed it with your own painterly signature. You used a different brush stroke, slightly different colors. Your flowers are a slightly different style. This is the perfect gift for mum. You're going to have some very lucky mums and grandmas out there who are going to get these beautiful daisy paintings today. Whatever you choose to do, remember the most important thing is that you enjoy the process and have great fun making them. Now, I would absolutely love to see your beautiful daisy masterpieces, so please share them in the comments on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. You can even upload your work to the student portal in Virtual MacArt. Please, please share. I would love to see them.